Hello, um, in this video we'll be looking at um, forces in equilibrium um, again. Now, um, let's imagine we have a, a, an object here. And if we apply um, some forces to it, let's apply a force there, call that 7 newtons. Another force there, and let's call that 8 newtons. Now, um, one way we can, we can look at this is if the two vectors follow on each other to, to find the resultant uh, force acting on it. So for instance, let's call the point here P. So if we, we could represent that as one vector like this by going 7 newtons at that angle, that vector, followed by 8 newtons on that vector there, so that's 7 and 8, and then the resultant force would in fact be the single um, step from P up to there. And that would be one way of representing the um, resultant um, ve vector or force. And um, that is triangular, triangular vectors, um, also sometimes called or parallelogram of forces, parallelogram of forces, or parallelogram of, of, of vectors when using three. Now, so how does that, but that is of course not an equilibrium, um, there's a resultant force. So what, what we could do instead is, let's assume we have three forces, which is, which is quite common, three forces acting on a point. We'll have a force acting in that direction there, Let's call that vector P. Um, another force acting on the point here. Let's call that vector Q. And an unknown force here. Um, call, call that vector, um, say, F, an unknown force. So to find the um, known force, what you could do is you start, you draw it out. So you go, first of all, you go P. And then you go in the Q, and then you draw the arrow in that direction. And that direction there, of course that is too small, that direction there, that resultant force there, it will be the same as that, that force there. So therefore you have um, F there is equal to R. And from there you find your um, the third vector the third force, keep it to equilibrium. So, uh, and to solve that, you could use cosine rule followed by the sine rule to find the, the magnitude and the angle um, that you want, um, call the angle there, theta, you could calculate that, um, and using trade, you can then work out what angle here, here say that's alpha, the angle to the horizontal and the vector. Um, between the vector and the horizontal, of course. Now, um, often the case, you will find that you just have simple vectors, well, simple meaning at right angles to each other. So if we had a situation here, we have the force here of four newtons and a force here of three newtons, that's on a point, P, and a third force here acting in that direction, um, call that force F. If you want to find out the unknown force, you could do the same idea. So, you take, here you go, a long four, and then that horizontal, up three in the vertical, and then this F would be that one there. Now, we could use Pythagoras to find that, so therefore this unknown force here, f of magnitude being f squared equals 4 squared plus 3 squared, that's 16 plus 9 is 25, f squared equals 25, so f equals 5 newtons. And what would the angle be? Well, you can find the angle here by using tan, so um, because tan theta equals 3 over 4, tan to the minus, so therefore theta 
equals times minus one of zero point seven five, um, and I think I have to not double check. comes out at 36.9 degrees. So when you find that you know, angle there, of course, that's theta there, you can then use um, that those two angles are op opposite to find out what angle F is. So you can write F is equal to five newtons um, at 36.9 degrees to horizontal. Um, as shown, because you can see what you get below horizontal. So that's one method of finding a third force in um, when you have three forces. That's one something. Now another method um, I want to look at is when we do resolving. So resolving forces, or if you like, taking components um, at 90 degrees to each other. So let's have a case here where we have, there's a point here, P, and you have a force acting down there, let's call that, um, it's a large force, 700 newtons. And what you have here is two equal forces here. So you can have some tension here. So that's tension in a string. So in fact, that could be um, a heavy object being suspended equally on the other side, that represents all oh, they're attached there. So we have the tension, the angle here is 30 degrees. So what you could do is you could cause that called resolve forces vertically. Now that means just looking at the vertical components. So what you'd have here vertically acting on that point you would have t cos theta cos 30 plus t cos 30 equals 700. And from there, of course, you get 2t cos 30 degrees equals 700. And you can then manipulate that equation to find out what t is. There's, there's, there's one unknown. In a linear equation. Now we can also, if we wanted to, but we don't need to, we could also resolve horizontally. So we can look at what's happening to the forces horizontally. Now there are only um, two components of any force acting horizontally and that doesn't include its weight acting down. So what we could have here is that T either cos of 60 or sine of 30, the same same thing. So T sine of 30 degrees acting that direction from that component of force is actually equal to T sine 30 acting the other way. Now, of course, that's exactly the same as if I wrote T sine 60 equals T sine 60 degrees. Um, that would be the same component as that would be for 60. And you'll find they just cancel out to give one equals one, which just is, doesn't give us information, but just shows you um, that the object is in equilibrium um, vertically and horizontally, and in fact in all directions. 